Hi everyone, I'm Tom and today I'm going to be playing Eon's End, which is a cooperative deck building game, but it's got a few twists on what you might expect from a deck builder. We are fighting the Rageborn, which is one of four nemeses that come in the base game, and there are, I can't remember how many characters, but a lot. I am Gian, and Marty, who is going to be helping me today, is Faye Draxa. One of the interesting things about this game, and that sets it apart from other deck builders, you do not shuffle your deck. There are some times when you might shuffle your discard or things, but in general you never shuffle your deck, and to go with that, you are given your starting hand, which I have out here, and your starting deck. So 10 cards to start with, 5 per round, standard deck builder things, but you are always going to have exactly the same things. and. The order in which you do things will affect how they go into your discard pile. When your discard pile runs out, instead of shuffling it like you would in a normal deck builder, you just flip it and it becomes your deck. So we have the Rageborn up there. He starts off with one Rage to one Fury token on him. He has a Strike deck, which is something special and specific to him. Other than that, he has his Nemesis deck, which is made up of nine cards specific to him and a certain number of other ones that changes based on the number of players, but they are basic Nemesis cards that, you know, you have a pool of them and you pick a random number, well, not a random number, a number specific to the number of players. Uh, I'm playing two player, which you can, it says on the back of the rules about solo play, you can play solo, obviously with any number of players, but you can do it two handed. There are special setup rules for the number of cards you need in the deck if you want to try it completely solo with just one character. And the Rageborn has 70 health, and the city that we are trying to protect, Gravehold, has 30 health. Uh, we have a pool of cards in the middle to buy from, just as you might expect from a deck builder, but other than that, I think we're ready. Oh, we need some health, actually. So now we come to another thing that's special about Eon's End. You don't have a specific turn order. We have this turn order deck. In a two-player game, there are two player one cards, two player two cards, and two nemesis cards and we shuffle them up and see whose turn it is. So to start with, it's player one, and we have these tokens, I am player one, and so I start my turn. What happens on a player's turn, you might ask? Well, we have the casting phase. If I had any prepped spells in my breach area here, which obviously I can't have for my first turn, but if I had any there, they would get cast and discarded but we have nothing, so we go straight to the main phase, and I can do a certain number of actions as many times as I want and in any order. So I can play a gem or relic card. I don't start with any relics in my deck, but I have gems. These generate ether, which is the currency of the game. So this is how you buy cards and do several other things. So you can play these at any time, they generate the money, and you can do other things with the money. Any gems or relics that you play on your turn are set aside, and at the end of your turn, you decide which order they go on top of your discard pile. You can gain a card with the ether that you've generated from gems. The cost of a card is in the top right corner here. Whenever you gain a card, it goes straight on to your discard pile. You can gain a charge. Charges are on your character sheet here. They cost two per charge. I need four charges to be able to activate my main, my special ability, which can be activated during my main phase. I can cast any player's prep spell without discarding it, then cast it again and discard it. Marty's, the Auspex Rune, can be activated when we draw a turn order card, and it can prevent any damage that the players or Gravehold would suffer during that turn. So when a Nemesis turn comes out and it's really going to be bad for us, hopefully Marty's going to have some charge ready to stop all of that damage. We can focus a Breach. You see, I have two open Breaches, and this is, this is another cool thing. This is different for every character as well. The ones you have open at the start, the position that the others are in, so the cost to open them is different. Marty's character doesn't have a Breach number one, so it's, uh, it's very different depending on who you pick. Uh, but for these closed breaches, you can focus breaches. You see they have a focus cost there. So you look at the one that's facing up. This would cost me three to focus. It would flip there. And you see if I want to open it, it's got a bit cheaper. It's gone down from nine to seven. But an added bonus is normally you can only prep spells to open breaches. But if you pay to focus a breach and rotate it, 
you can focus a spell to it. You can open a breach by just paying the, the big cost there. You can prep a spell to a breach, which is just playing a card from your hand to the open breach. Uh, you can resolve while prepped effects if you have some prepped spells. And if the Nemesis had any, uh, any power cards out there that would have a two discard effect, so bad things are going to happen unless we do this two discard effect, you can do that on your turn as well. So what will I do? Well, I start with two open breaches, and my starting hand has two spells in it. So my first two actions are going to be prepping spells to breaches. So at the start of my next turn, as long as these are still out, I'm going to be doing two damage to something, possibly the Nemesis, if he hasn't brought anything out. Now, I have three Ether, but I can get an additional one if I use it to buy a gem. So potential four altogether. So I've only got four if I buy a gem. I've got three otherwise, and nothing that we... we we set up, I've just done this randomly, there are some nice custom uh, pre-built setups you can use, but we have four spells, two relics, and three gems in the, you know, the, the, sh the shop. And so I have three ether, no, not enough to buy any of this stuff. So I could buy one sister's pearl. When you play this, it generates two ether, and everyone can reveal the top card of their deck and either discard it or put it back. But since I have four if I buy gems, I think I'm going to buy two jade. And this is going to generate ether for me. So buying those puts them in my discard pile. And then the cards I used to buy those, you know, any relics or gems get discarded in the order of your choice at the end of your turn. I'm going to put the slightly better one, you know, further up in the, in the pile. I will say one thing about the store. One thing I've noticed is that there is nothing to heal us in this store. There is nothing to heal us in our abilities. So hopefully we, we, we need to get this ended quickly because we are gonna get beaten down otherwise with no hope. There is a card that lets us heal Gravehold if, uh, if things get dire there. But that is the end of my turn. Now we have the draw phase, draw cards from the top of your deck until you have five in your hand. That's another thing about this. It's, it's not unique to this game, but it's not Dominion style where you discard the rest of your hand and then draw, back, draw five cards. It's just draw back up to five. Any cards you couldn't play stay in your hand. So my next hand, I already know. It's, uh, it's three crystals and two sparks. So let's see whose turn it is next. And it's Marty's turn, so it's, it's actually working out quite, quite normal here. Marty's special card that's specific to him is he gains an ether, an ally may suffer a damage to destroy a card in their hand, and that's, you know, like trashing a card in Dominion to thin out your deck and get to the better cards. So Marty has one spell and one open breach. He's going to prep that there. Then he has one, two, three, four ether. I think he might move on to some of these better cards, rather than getting more gems to get more ether, he could grab one of these middle ones here. So this is, uh, you can play it to focus anyone's breach, which might be good for him since he only has one open breach, uh, or destroy the card to heal Gravehold. This one's really nice. You may cast a prep spell that you prepped this turn. If you do it, it deals two additional damage. And this one is deal two damage and ally gains a charge. I think he's going to buy that one. He'll do a bit more damage and getting charges will be nice because we won't have to pay you know, the ether to do that. Although I am I am tempted to get the focusing orb, but we'll, we'll see what happens. He, he is going to have four crystals next turn so he can buy it with those four crystals. He draws back up and he has, as we know, four crystals and a spark. Who's next? It's Marty again. So... Now we have the casting phase. He can cast them in any order. And this is interesting as well. Remember how I said, if you focus a breach, you can prep a spell to it. If you did that, you have to cast those spells. Otherwise, it's your choice. Marty can choose to leave this here. Since he's got another spark, that doesn't make too much sense. So he's gonna cast it. You choose the order in which you cast things, but as soon as you have cast it, you put it in your discard pile, then resolve its effect. So. The order you cast them affects you know, how they're gonna come back out in the future as well. So this spark, deal one damage. And so the 
Rage Born goes down to 69 health now. We, we've made a little bit of progress there. So now, Marty can prep this spark. Now he's in the main phase. And he has four crystals, so four ether again. I think he's going to grab that focusing orb. Maybe he should have done this in the other order, but it's done now. So Marty needs to draw five cards. He doesn't have a deck, so the discard gets flipped. And he has five, and he should know what these are, although I don't. So there we go. He has three crystals, his special tourmaline shard, and his ignite, which is good. He's only got one spell for his one breach. So that was a good turn. And surely it's Nemesis time now. Oh no, it's me, which means there's gonna the last two are gonna be two Nemesis turns in a row without us being able to do anything about it. So I'm gonna cast these sparks. I have two more sparks, I might as well. So he's down to 67 now. Then onto my turn. I'm just gonna cast these sparks in my open breaches. And I have three crystals. So not enough to gain you know, any of the better cards. I think I'm gonna carry up, carry on building my gems because I could get one charge and nothing else, but I think I'm gonna use the three to grab this Sifter's Pearl, the one that lets us check the top card of our deck and choose to discard it or not. The gems I use go on top of the discard and I need to flip my deck as well. So I have all of that ether that I bought. Although the downside to that is I haven't got any uh, any spells for next turn. So now we come to the Nemesis turn and we can flip the player raid to see what we do here. So from oldest to newest, resolve the effects of each minion and power card in the Nemesis has in play. Obviously his first turn, he hasn't got anything in play. Then we draw a card. So he has got an attack. If it's an attack card, resolve its effect immediately and nothing else happens. He is going to unleash. When the Rageborn unleashes, he gains a Fury token. And if he ends his turn with four or more Fury tokens, bad things are going to happen. If there are two Nemesis turn order cards in the turn order discard pile, unleash two additional times. We are very, very lucky that this was the first one we drew. We'll see whose turn it is next. Of course, it's the Nemesis. So nothing already in play. The attack is just a one-time thing. He has got a power card. So we put this out with two power tokens on it. Nothing happens this turn. On his next turn, when we, you know, before we draw, we go through all of his existing cards, we take a power token off this. If we take the last power token off, he does the effect here, which is unleash twice, which would give him four tokens and a nasty attack. To discard this though, we need to spend six ether, which it could really hold us back, and it has to be done in one person's turn. Unfortunately, this looks like this is where all of my ether is going, so I have a lot on me. Okay, that's the end of you know the first go around this deck. I'm just gonna shuffle this. Okay, who's next? It is Marty. So, first of all, we do the casting. His spark goes off. There are no minions to hit, so the Rageborn is down to 66 now. Then, let's see, he's got one spell, he might as well do that. Deal two damage and I gains a charge, he wants that to go off. And he has four, I'm not gonna suffer damage to destroy cards. We don't wanna suffer damage in this game. But he has four to spend. Let's see, he could get another Ignite, he could try and work, he could buy two Jade. So this is interesting because since he's only got one Breach, if this came out with a spell, he could cast the spell. Well, he could he could prep the spell, cast it with this, and then prep another spell. So I think this would be a good card for him. He's going to buy that with his four. This goes back on top, and he draws five more cards. Let's see, spark, crystal, 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 crystal. So four again, not enough to stop that nasty card. Let's see who's next. It's me. My sparks go off. That's two more damage. We're getting there. 64 health on the Rageborn now. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven ether, eight if I want to gain a gem. But I think this six is going to go on stopping 
the Eye of Nothing. So this just gets discarded. Now I've paid six ether. It's going to stop him unleashing. And then I have two left if I gain a gem. So I'm just going to gain another Jade. So the Jade goes on the discard pile first. And then I choose the order of these. I think let's, let's have all the Jade in a row. So there we go. A nice balance there. Although I've got no spells prepped, unfortunately. Who's next? Nemesis time. He's got nothing out now because I discarded his card. And his first minion, the Provoker. So, this again, this doesn't happen now. It's going to happen from his next turn if the Provoker's still alive. Gravehold suffers damage equal to the number of Fury tokens the Rageborn has, which at the moment is two. And who's next? It's Marty. So, Marty's going to deal two damage. I think he's going to deal it to the Provoker and try and get rid of that thing. Someone can gain a charge. I think he's going to gain the charge himself. I think we want his ability, you know, in the wings, ready to come out when we need it. He's got one spell to prep, so the spark can go up there. And he's got four crystals. This is quite nice. He's got four every turn to buy things. So now I think he is going to get another one of those spells. And what he spent goes on there. He draws back up one, needs to flip the deck. But this is where the planning can start getting a bit shifted with one card left. Now he's drawing four from the top instead of five, two, three, four. So not very much money, but he's got some nice abilities there ready to go off. Who's next? It's the Nemesis. So Gravehold suffers two damage, 28 health now. And a new card, Rageborn Strikes. Okay, when Rageborn Strikes, we do the following things. Draw a card from the Strike deck and resolve it. Raise. Gravehold suffers three damage. Any player suffers one damage. So Graveholds down to 25. Although we can heal it with those uh, cards. You have to destroy them, but it does heal Gravehold. And any player suffers one damage. Uh, I'll, I'll suffer the damage. Okay, I have nine health now. The Strike then gets shuffled back into the Strike deck and the Rageborn loses three Fury tokens, which is very nice because it has just, you know, gutted the Provoker's power. We don't have to worry about that for a while. Okay, that was his turn. And finally, me. No casting to do, but I will prep these two spells. Then I have four ether, and we can each reveal the top card of our deck and decide whether to discard it or not. I'm going to discard that crystal. I don't really care about that staying there. Marty has just a crystal. Mm, he doesn't have that many. I think he's going to leave his on the top of his deck. Okay, I have four, though, so I can buy something interesting now. I think I would like to do the Blasting Staff so I can cast spells in the turn that I've prepped them. Okay, I need to draw. So flip my deck, and my deck is, I'm still drawing five off the top. Two, three, four, five. A lot of cash and two sparks. I need to shuffle the turn order again, and it's the Nemesis turn. The Provoker does zero damage to Gravehold, and then Skewer, Unleash, which means he gets a token back. Any player suffers three damage and draws a card. We know Marty's next card's a crystal. Maybe mine's going to be more interesting. I don't know, though. Either way, let's, let's just do it. Ooh, I don't like this. It is a crystal. Oh, well. Next turn. It is Marty. So he has a spark all prepped. I think he's going to do one more to the Provoker because I can then take it out. If it's my turn next, of course. Let's see, he's got this spark and he might as well use his blasting staff so he can cast. So the relics go off to the side and get put back in any order. He can cast a spell that he prepped this turn. If he does it, it deals two additional damage. What he should have done, knowing what his hand is, he should not have done that damage to the provoker at the start. He should have done it to the rageborn because now this one that's been prepped with two additional damage can just take out the Provoker straight away. Then he'll use the Focusing Orb to focus any player's Breach. He will focus his own. 
and let's just rotate that one there. And he has two crystals left. I think he's going to get himself a charge. So let's put, let's put this next to the spells, then the focusing orb, then the things, and give him a charge. That's a bit of a shame. He's got two ignites in a row there, but he'll have one handy for a future turn. Let's see who's next. Marty. No spells. He can prep the ignite. This one is going to stick around. And then he's got three to buy things with. Since he's got three, I think he's going to buy this Sifter's Pearl. Then we can go. We can have a look at our top cards when we're buying things. This ignite sticks around because he can't get rid of it. You can't just choose to discard it and he can't put it anywhere. He could have spent three mana focusing and then it would have gone out. Maybe he should have done that. Yeah, take backs. So he didn't gain a Sifter's Pearl. He focused this breach and put the ignite in it. <laughs> Reminding myself of better moves as I'm explaining the rules. So now he has a completely free hand. One, two, three crystals. Flip the deck. A spark and a spark. So maybe he'll focus again so that he can put another spell out there. Whose turn's next? Mine. Okay then, I'm doing two damage. 61 health he's got now. And I should, I should mention as well, and if you can see the small writing in the middle here, as well as being able to put more spells out at the same time, focusing these breaches and opening them is important because once they're opened, they deal an extra damage. So on my turn, I will just prep these two sparks. And I have two, four, six, seven, ether. Now seven ether is enough for this consuming void, which can do an insane amount of damage, but you have to destroy cards so it does that damage. I think I'm gonna grab one, because I have enough jade that I could, I could destroy some crystals, I think. So I want the crystals to be in the hand after the turn that I cast that spell. I have a completely free hand, so five more cards. Oh dear, I've got my blasting staff and no, you know, no spell for the same turn. That's unfortunate. Next, it's me again. Two more damage to the Rageborn. So that'll be 59. And so the blasting staff is just going to have to stick around. I have two, yeah, let's play that. That's two ether. We can check the top card of our decks. I'm gonna get rid of that crystal. Marty, does he want the blasting, does he want the blasting staff to stay there? Yes. He wants those to keep coming out. It would be nice if he could draw it. Okay, two, three, four, five mana, six if I gain a gem. Although I could, I could do that one separately. I'm going to use five, not to gain a gem, but to gain this Oblivion Swell. Because while it's prepped, I get an extra ether. And when I cast it, deal two damage, you may discard a gem and deal additional damage equal to its cost. And I do have, you know, this pearl's worth three, the, the jades are worth two, and if I get one of some of these clouded sapphires, they're worth six. So that could be six extra damage. So the blasting staff sticks around. So I draw, I've got two there. Flip the deck. Three, four, five. Okay, I think it's the nemesis now. Yep. He's got nothing out. Woven Sky Power. So to get rid of this, we need to discard three cards. Uh, it's gonna happen in two turns. He unleashes, which is get one more token. Any player suffers four damage. Well, we don't want that to happen, do we? So someone on their turn is gonna to have to discard three cards. I need to shuffle the turn order. And who's next? It is me. Nothing prepped. I want the Consuming Void there. Oh, this is interesting. I could use the Blasting Staff to make it go off now. It would mean I'm not discarding three cards to make that happen, but I think, so I could get rid of those. I could destroy those, because I have better spells than a Spark, and one Crystal going missing isn't gonna hurt me that much. I think this is a good idea. Okay, I'm gonna prep that. Then I'm gonna play this Relic. You may cast a prepped spell, you prep this turn, it does two additional damage. Destroy up to two cards in hand, deal three damage for each card you destroy in this way. I'm gonna destroy these two, so that's six damage, plus two from the Blasting Staff. That is eight damage, which is really nice. He's down to 51. Consuming Void is consumed, 
and I can prep this spark. Nothing else to be done, but really I would have had one spark and you know one extra damage, one crystal, wouldn't have really mattered. So I draw back up now and here comes all of my money for next turn. And a spell, so I've got something. Who's next? It's the Nemesis. So we take a power off that. Hopefully we get to go before him next turn. So one of us can discard some cards. What's new? Invoke Carnage. Power card, spend seven to get rid of it. And he's gonna unleash when it goes off. Any player suffers a damage and an additional damage for each Fury token Rageborn has. He has one at the moment. And so that's gonna get two power tokens on it because it says power two there. Who's next? It is Marty. So, wow, this is nice. He's got two Ignites, I'd forgotten about that. So he has to do the one in the Closed Breach and he is going to choose to do this other one. So four damage, and so that is 47 the Rageborn's down to. And then he can choose to put two charges on things. I think... Yeah, he's just going to do them on himself for now. He is going to prep this spark, I think. How many did he needs to discard three cards for that power card. He's going to keep this spark around and discard these three crystals, so he's not really getting anywhere this turn but we can get rid of this power card which would have made him unleash and we can't afford to take four damage so he draws back up one two three four doesn't have the money at least i've got some money if as long as i go before the nemesis has two turns as long as i go before then I can get rid of that. I won't be doing anything else on my turn, but at least I can get rid of things. Marty, spark time. So 46 health on the Rageborn now. And then he can cast spark. He can do blasting staff, cast the prep spell with two extra damage. That's three damage from that spark. He's down to 43. I think, yes, the, the way we're going to try to win this is just destroy him as quickly as we can. There is There are two ways to win in this game. We want to kill the Rageborn or exhaust him, make him go through his entire deck with uh, us still standing. And we can lose many ways if Gravehold falls, if both of us get exhausted. But that's not happening right now. Focusing Orb, let's see, we don't need to heal Gravehold. I think someone should focus. And if Marty focuses this closed breach, it would open. I think he's going to do that. He's going to focus his own breach again. And it's now open because it was all the way around. He's got two crystals to buy things. He's going to give himself the last charge. So when something bad really is going down, he can spend all of his charges to activate his ability and prevent all damage to everyone. Five cards, two ignites again, that's really nice. Now he's got two open breaches as well. What would be even nicer is if we could get a blasting staff so they could be cast in the turn they were put down with more damage, but we're doing well as it is. My turn, well, the spark deals a damage. He's on 42. Then I have seven mana, well, seven ether. I apologize. And I'm gonna use that to get rid of this invoke carnage, which, might not be that bad. It would make someone suffer three damage, basically. It's one plus the two tokens he would have. I don't want it to happen, though. And I can just spend the mana and you know, basically kind of skip a turn to make it happen. I'm going to prep that spark. And let's put the jades on top. Well, at the bottom, but you know what I mean. Draw back up. Spark, crystal, Livian swell. So some nice things there, the, the one there I can discard gems, so maybe it would be worth keeping this around to discard it when that spell goes off, because I can just choose not to play it. Anyway, that's the time for my next turn. Nemesis, he's got nothing out, but the Venomite is coming out, it's a minion. 
from the next Nemesis turn onwards, the player with the lowest life suffers two damage or anyone discards a prepped spell costing three or more. And it's gonna have nine health. Okay, so I'll shuffle the turn order. Who's next? It is me. So the spark, I am going to do that to the Venomite. Let's try and get rid of that as quickly as we can. Then prepping spells. Let's put the Oblivion Swell out and the Spark. So what do I have? If I use the Sister's Pearl, we can check the top cards of our decks and I'll get two extra mana, Ether. Or I'm just gonna use two of it to get a charge. So my ability is very nice as well. Any play, cast any player's prepped spell without discarding it and then cast it again and discard it. I'm gonna keep this around for next turn when my Oblivion Swell goes off. So I'll be able to make it do five damage. Oh, but while this is prepped, I get an extra, an extra ether. Rather than waste that, instead of getting the charge, I am gonna buy another Sifter's Pearl. Okay, that's, oh, I'm keeping that one around, aren't I? And I used those two things. So draw back up, two, three, Flip the deck for five. Whose turn is it now? It's Marty's. So he has nothing prepped. He's gonna prep his Ignites. One now gets plus one damage. And he can, he's got three. I think he'll get one of these Sifter's Pearls now, might as well. Try and bump up his Ether a bit. So next turn, he's got a lot of crystals and two sparks. That's good, he's getting two spells out, he's got two slots for them. It's working out okay for him. Next is me. First of all, I'm gonna do the Oblivion Swell. So deal two damage, you may discard a gem, and deal additional damage equal to its cost. So I'm gonna discard this, and that does five damage in total to the Venomite. He's got three health left. I think, yeah, let's do the spark to the Venomite, because then it's got two health left. If Marty manages to go, he'll kill it. Well, Marty's gonna go, isn't it? There's, there's, there's three cards left here, two Nemesis ones and a Marty. So it's, it's gonna get to go, well, it might get to go twice and then Marty kills it. But we'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. It's ready for Marty to kill it with one of his spells anyway. Now I can do this combo again and keep all of these cards together but I am destroying more cards. I'm definitely gonna prep that Consuming Void. I could do eight more damage if I'm willing to discard the, to destroy these. One of them's my nice starting bonus ether card. I'm gonna do it. So I've prepped that. I'm gonna use my Blasting Staff, destroy these two cards, but that is six plus two, another eight damage. So what's he on now? 34. So he's more than halfway gone now. I just have to watch out that I don't destroy too many cards and have a useless deck. Okay, who's next? It's Marty. That's good because he can kill the Venomite. The downside to that is Nemesis going two turns in a row. Nothing we can do about it. So the first one goes off, kills the Venomite. And an ally can gain a charge. Oh no, I've just realized that I've been giving, I've been letting Marty have these charges when it's any ally, which is me. Any ally is a player other than yourself. That's why, that's why some cards say any player and some say an ally. Oh dear. I don't know how many times Marty's actually paid for. He's paid at least once. I think he's paid twice for charges. I'm not sure, this is a bit hard to retrofit back in, but it means he's gonna waste one of these things, so. I can gain a charge. It also means that I could probably have done this a while ago. Who knows though, I'm not sure. Uh, he will, so does he want to save that and do it when someone's got a charge, but he's got spells to put out. He could save that because the monster might put a load of things out now. And then hmm, he hasn't got four, this is four to focus this. He's just gonna cast it. Three damage, no one can gain a charge, but he's down to 31 now. And he will prep these in his main phase. He has three 
mana. And of course, he can just he can just say that he's generating three, so all these go out from his hand and just use two. Because I think it would be a good idea to charge his thing and keep it going. Does he want to hang on to that crystal? I don't think so. He'll just he'll play it to generate the ether, and then the ether, well, goes off into the ether. One, two, three, four, five. So no sp no spells next turn. And, well, we know the Nemesis is going twice in a row, isn't he? He's got nothing to activate. Oh, the Scorn. So from next Nemesis turn, which is next turn? From next turn onwards, Gravehold suffers three damage or unleashed twice. Well, Graveholds in a nice position, actually. Usually, Gravehold has been beaten up a lot more than this. So next turn, Nemesis again. So he activates. We'll we'll let we'll let Gravehold suffer three damage. We obviously can't let that happen for too long. And then next, Lay Waste. Unleash twice. Any player suffers two damage. So he now has three on him. Not quite enough to make him strike. And I think Marty is going to take the two damage since he hasn't taken any yet. That's his turn. So I'm just going to shuffle this. Okay, whose turn is it? It is Marty's turn. He is going to do two damage. I think he's going to do it to the score one. We'll start whittling him down. Then, this blasting staff can't be used for anything. Focus any player's breach. I think he's going to, he's going to help me focus mine. Then, he'll play a Sifter's Pearl. So we can each look at the top card of our decks and decide if we want to keep them or not. I think I'll keep a spark around. And Marty will get rid of a crystal. So he's got four mana to spend. He is going to grab another Ignite, I think. And the Blasting Staff stays out, draws back up. There we go. There's his Ignite. That's very good. One can go off straight away next turn. And it's the Nemesis turn. So Gravehold suffers three damage. I think we'll do that rather than let him unleash twice. Gravehold's on 19 now. And new thing happens. Unleash twice. The player with the most prepped spells discards their most expensive prepped spell. Well, nobody's prepped any spells. So after unleashing twice, he now has one, two, three, four, five on him. Remember, if he has four or more, he's going to strike at the end of his, uh, his turn. So draw a card from the strike deck. The player with the lowest life suffers two damage. That's not too bad. I'm on six. No, well, now I'm on four. And we shuffle this back in. And then we take three tokens off. So he's got two now. And that's the end of his turn. It's Marty now. So he's going to ignite in the plus one damage space. He's going to prep that. Then he's going to do blasting staff. Deal three, five damage. Yeah, he'll do it to the scorn. Deal five damage and any ally gains a charge. I need to do this. Have I... I haven't had a turn for a while, have I? I need to get that uh, that done so I'll, so there's there's space for a charge to happen. Although I can make Marty's spells go off, that's very nice. So Marty's going to prep this here. He's got two ether. He's going to spend that on a charge. So he's going to put those back in that order. Five new cards. Crystal, crystal, crystal. Spark, spark. Okay then. Who's next? The Nemesis. I think we're going to keep having Gravehold take the damage. 16 it's on now. And then Needlemore. Oh no, more damage for Gravehold. And this, this Needlemore's got 11 health. Okay, so there's only two cards, so this must be me twice. Me! Let's see, I will prep my Spark. I will use my ability. Which is quite nice because I'm going to get two charges back. That's good. So, cast any player's prepped spell without discarding it. So, three damage. And we we could do it to the scorn. Yeah, let's, let's just waste the damage. You can't split damage up from one attack. Uh, so, the scorn is gone. Any ally gains a charge. Then you cast it again and discard it. So, two damage. Uh, we'll do that to needle more. One, two, three, and I gain a charge again. So that's that's worked out quite well. 
I could even, let's, let's see, I have seven mana, so I could buy another very nice spell. I could get Oblivion Swell or something, or give myself the charges so that I can do this again next phase. Maybe my Spark, or maybe I'm going to get a better spell, or maybe my, no, I'm next, aren't I? I know I'm next. I think I'm going to spend five on another Oblivion Swell, because I like that, and then... The Jade, I'd like another Consuming Void, but I'm worried about getting rid of too many cards. The Jade I will use on a charge, and then it should be my turn again. Yep. So I should have a hand as well. So Spark, there we go, I've got enough to get the charge I need. And we flip the deck, so the Spark is probably going to get activated twice. Oh! Oh wow, okay. The Oblivion Swell and the Sifter's Pearl in my hand. So let's, let's prep this, then give myself a charge. I've got full charges again, and we don't want full charges because Marty's going to be casting, you know, uh, Ignite on me. So cast any player's prepped spell without discarding it. And so this isn't perfect because I'm only going to be able to discard a, a thing once, but anyway, let's do this. Two damage. And I'll discard this so it does five damage. I'm gonna do it to Rageborn, I think. Let's see if we can get him gone. Then we cast it again and discard it, two damage. Okay, and I can prep my spark in that now empty space, discard these crystals and my new hand. A lot of, a lot of spells and a blasting staff. Wow, this is a good hand. Okay, so I need to shuffle this up. Okay, who's next? It is the Nemesis. So Gravehold suffers two damage. It's down to 14. And so the Blood Cry, get rid of this. We need to lose four charges. Otherwise, he unleashes four times. Well, we don't want that to happen, do we? Unfortunately, though, only Marty's got charges. I shouldn't have these. I just did my power, didn't I? Okay, that's the end of his turn. Marty. Has nothing out there. He's just going to prep these sparks. And then he has three crystals. Does he want to lose his charges? Now the charges could stop something really bad happening when he strikes. He's going to wait. He's going to spend the three crystals to get this pearl. Because he's, he's, going, to get, he's going to get a turn before that goes off. If the Nemesis goes before him or not, it's two turns before this goes off. So he's okay for a little bit. Who's next? It's me. So I do two damage to something. I am just going to concentrate on the Rageborn and hope that Gravehold lasts long enough. So now it comes to my hand. I'm definitely gonna use the Blasting Staff with something. The Consuming Void would be awesome I could, you know, do, it would do eight damage in total, but I would have to destroy these two cards. On the other hand, if I prepped this and cast it this turn and discarded the pearl, not destroyed, this would do five, seven damage, which is, yeah, it's only one less damage. I don't have to destroy anything. And this is ready in the hope that I draw crystals next turn. I think that's the plan. So I'm going to prep this. Okay, blasting staff time. I'm going to cast it, and it does 2 plus 2 plus 3. That's 7 damage. So the Rageborn is on 15. We're getting there. Then I can just prep these, and hopefully my next hand is stuff I don't mind destroying. There we go. I've got a crystal straight away, and I don't mind too much giving up a jade. That's my next hand. Marty should have a hand, shouldn't he? What's he got waiting? So the Focusing Orb, he could destroy that now to, uh, to heal Gravehold so we can hang on in there a bit longer. Next, it's me. Oh, so destroy two cards. I'm gonna do this straight away. It's gonna be a Crystal and a Jade. So that is six damage. He is on nine health. The spark does a measly one, but eight health he's on now. Marty's going to do three damage from his thing. 
and I have six mana. Oh, let's do this one first. Reveal the top card of our decks. Yeah, let's keep that. Unfortunately, I've played this now and I'm not going to be able to hang on to it for next turn. Marty has a crystal, he's going to discard the crystal. So now I have two mana. I think I'm going to hang on to one of these Jade for next turn because at least then I'm going to have two for this Oblivion Swirl. And then that gives me four mana. I'm just going to spend that on two charges. Who's next? Nemesis. So Gravehold suffers two damage. It's on 12. We take a power off here. Next Nemesis turn, that's going to happen. But this should be Marty, I think. Yep. He's going to do three damage to the Rageborn. He's going to discard four charges. Well, lose four charges to stop the Blood Cry happening. And then he can start his turn. So he's going to prep Ignite in the plus one space. And what can he do? Do we need to destroy this so that Greyhold gains three life? Let's just do it, just in case. Just in case some one of his next cards is Gravehold takes a ton of damage. Back up to 15, but he did have to destroy a card for that. Then he'll play the Sifter's Pearl. Let's look at the top card of our decks. He's going to keep that Ignite. I'm definitely going to keep that. I already know, don't I? So he's got four mana. Maybe he'll spend that on charges and build them back up again. Yeah, he's going to get two charges with that four. Oh, yes, two Ignite and a Blasting Staff. This looks like it's done. I'm just going to shuffle the turn order. So whose turn is it? It's me. I have nothing prepped. I didn't draw a hand either. Two, three, four, five. Oh, so I should have looked at this. And do I want to discard it or not? No, I'm okay with that. So I'm not going to get to do any damage this turn, am I? Should I just use the jade? Maybe I should have used the jade last turn. It's too late for that now, though. Oh, this is very close. See, I could just spend all of this, all of this mana and give myself the... Yeah, that's a good idea. I'm going to prep that. I'm going to use all of my four mana on these charges and then activate Marty's spell, which does... Three damage to the Rageborn. I gain a charge, and then we do it again and discard it. Three more damage. Boom. He's got minus one health, and he is done for. So, the Rageborn's been defeated. You know, his, his minions flee, and we are victorious for, for today anyway. Now, before I get too ahead of myself, I will point out that there are difficulties on the back of each of the nemeses in the game. And Rageborn is a 2 out of 10. He is the one that you fight in the, you know, it's, it's the one that is given to you for your first game. Although I have randomised the deck since then. And I haven't tried any of the harder ones. But there we go. We managed it with these characters. That was Eon's End. I hope you enjoyed that and you get a feel for the game. If you'd like to know what I think, then you can click the card up there. But thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.